begin this video today by looking at a very important thought, just a short thought, that should stimulate your thinking. I've entitled it the most deeply rooted papal error. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Christ came to this world to set us free. He has made us free moral agents, and freedom shall be prized by every soul on earth. Freedom has boundaries. The boundary of freedom is righteousness. No man can determine the boundaries of freedom. God himself has determined those boundaries. And therefore, no man has a right to take the freedom away from another in regard especially to how he worshiped God. So Paul says, regardless of whatever happens to you, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And do not allow yourself to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Man's theories, man's ideas, man's traditions, man's suppositions, all of these tend to bring us into bondage. God wants for us to be free, truly free indeed. It was the desire for liberty of conscience that inspired the pilgrims to brave the perils of the long journey across the sea, to endure the hardships and dangers of the wilderness, and with God's blessing to lay on the shores of America the foundation of a mighty nation. Yet these honest and God-fearing men as they were, the pilgrims did not yet comprehend the great principle of religious toleration, the freedom which they sacrificed so much to secure for themselves, they were not equally ready to grant to others. Now the doctrine that God has committed to the church, the right to control the conscience and to define and punish heresy is one of the most deeply rooted of papal errors. While the reformers rejected the creed of Rome, they were not entirely free from her spirit of intolerance. That is a problem that we have today. Men want freedom for themselves, but they are not as willing to give freedom to others. Freedom to act, freedom to think, freedom to speak according to the dictates of conscience freedom to believe. These are the wonderful gifts that God has given to each individual. We are free moral agents and we strive for this freedom for ourselves. But when it comes to giving that freedom to others, then we recognize that we are not as free as we thought. The freest person is the person that is willing to give others their freedom. And to the extent that we embrace our own freedom, to that very extent should we be willing to give it to others. The dense darkness in which, through the long ages of her rule, popery had enveloped all Christendom had not even yet been wholly dissipated, said one of the leading ministers in the colony of Massachusetts Bay. It was toleration that made the world anti-Christian. And the church never took harm by the punishment of heretics. The regulation was adopted by the colonists that only church members should have a voice in civil government. This is what occurred in the early days of uh, America. When the early church fathers ran from uh, persecution, because they wanted to be Protestants, they wanted to stand for their faith, they were protesting the tyranny of the papacy. They ran and established a wonderful 
government based upon religious liberty. Having a country without a king and a church without a pope and yet they did not imbibe the wonderful New Testament principle of religious toleration for all men. John has made a statement. He says, all human thought must be subservient to the word of God. The church has absolutely no authority outside of the word of God. The church has no arbitrary authority to exercise in matters of faith and worship. The word of God alone is the authority. And Martin Luther King Jr. said when he was alive, he who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps to perpetrate it. He who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. Whenever we see any semblance of injustice, any semblance of taking away of another person's liberty, to believe in accordance with his conscience, and to work in accordance with his convictions, when action is taken against him or her, then protest again becomes necessary. May God have mercy upon us and enable us to stand strong for the truth as it is in Jesus Christ.